Well, Hong Kong uh, reported their first Candida auris case in a patient who recently traveled to Switzerland. And of course, they're reminding members of the public on the proper use of antimicrobials and maintaining personal hygiene against the disease. Now, the 48-year-old man was admitted to the intensive care unit at Prince Margaret Hospital on May 19th following pulmonary embolism. Candida auris was detected from the culture of his endotracheal aspirate obtained in mid-June, which was confirmed by the Center for Health Protection's Public Health Laboratory Services branch subsequently. The patient's in stable condition and is currently under isolation at the hospital. Contact tracing by the hospital is in progress. Um, they say Candida is a fungus commonly found in the natural world, particularly in moist and warm environments. In humans, it is commonly found in body sites such as the oral cavity, the digestive tract, skin, and the vagina. It is a common fungus living on or in the human body, but can occasionally cause infections, especially in individuals with impaired immunity. Now, among all the species, Candida auris is more drug resistant than the other Candida species. Infections have varied from being mild to potentially life-threatening or fatal, depending on what part of the body was affected and the general health of the patient. So let's go ahead and um, take a little bit, take a closer look at Candida auris. Um, it's an emerging fungus that uh, presents a serious global health threat, according to the CDC. Uh, and there's three main reasons for this concern. It is often multi-drug resistant. It's difficult to identify with standard laboratory methods and can be misidentified in labs without specific technology. And it causes outbreaks in healthcare settings. Uh, for this reason, it is important to quickly identify Candida auris in hospitalized patients so that the healthcare facilities can take special precautions to stop its spread. And uh, piggybacking on the uh, antifungal anti susceptibility, uh, the resistance, um, CDC says that all Candida auris isolates should undergo antifungal susceptibility testing. Um, however, there are no established um, susceptibility breakpoints so basically, the breakpoints are defined based on those established uh, for other closely related Candida species and on expert opinion. And there are three general classes of drugs that have, are used and often are ineffective with Candida auris. The triazoles is the first one, the polyenes, and the echinocandins. And uh, it says based on these, and it gives a list of MIC breakpoints. And it says based on these MIC breakpoints, many isolates are resistant to multiple classes of drugs. In fact, some Candida auris isolates have been found to be resistant to all three classes of antifungals, including two CDC confirmed cases in the US. Now in both these US cases, resistance to all antifungal drug classes were seen and the isolates evolved pan-resistance in response to the treatment. We have received reports of pan-resistance found in other countries as well. Here in the US, about 90% of Candida auris isolates have been resistant to fluconazole, and about 30% have been resistant to amphotericin B, and less than 5% have been resistant to the echinocandins. So, very, very serious aspect of this um, fungus, this yeast, is the drug resistance, which is quite, quite common. And let's take a look at um, where, where are we seeing Candida auris in the United States and elsewhere around the world? Well, most Candida auris cases in the U.S. have been detected in the New York City area. New Jersey and in the Chicago area. But there are strains that have been linked to other parts of uh, there are strains in the US that have been linked to other parts of the world. 
Um, so if we take a look at the map, you can see the darker colors, New York, New Jersey, Illinois, I have seen the most cases. Um, and we can take a look at the hard numbers and we see Illinois, right, the Chicago area, 168 confirmed cases. This line here is the probable cases, only four. New Jersey, 116 confirmed and 22 probable. And New York City is 334 confirmed and four probable. Anyway, so we have a total as of April 30th, that's the latest numbers from the CDC, 654 confirmed cases in, in the United States and 30 probable. In addition, uh, there's been over 1,200 patients that have been found to be colonized with Candida auris uh, based on targeted screening. So that's uh, interesting also. So what are the definitions here? What's a clinical case? Well, a clinical case, according to the CDC, is based on cultures or culture-independent diagnostic testing from specimens collected during the course of clinical care for the purpose of diagnosing or treating disease. Then the probable case would be considered um, cases in which presumptive laboratory evidence and evidence of epidemiologic linkage have been established. And then of course, colonization. What is colonization? Screening is when swabs are collected from patients to determine whether or not they may unknowingly be carrying the organism somewhere on their body without signs of active infection. So colonization means that these patients are found to be carrying the yeast on their bodies even though they are not sick with the infection. Then if we continue on, we can see that it's not just the United States that have been reporting cases, it's in a number of countries around the world. Um, and here's the map and, and the green countries are the countries that have only reported out a single case so far. So we're looking at Austria, uh, Belgium in Europe, Chile right here, uh, Iran, Malaysia over here in Asia, over here, uh, the Netherlands also in, uh, in Europe, Norway in Europe, Switzerland, Taiwan, this little island right here, Thailand, and in the Middle East, the UAE, which is somewhere right around this area. Now, multiple cases have been reported in a number of countries besides the United States, include, to include Australia, Canada, China, Colombia, France, Germany, and the list goes on and on. So it's, it's, it's a big problem throughout the world. Now, it also notes that U.S. cases of Candida auris have been found in patients who had recent stays in healthcare facilities in India, Kenya, Kuwait, Pakistan, South Africa, and the UAE and Venezuela. So important to know um, that fact also. And the last thing I want to talk about is obviously uh, hospital acquired infections are a big deal. Um, and um, multi-drug resistance is a big deal. So there was a uh, Research that was presented at the ASM Microbe last week or the week before, very recently, and um, it looked at how Candida auris was actively shed in the healthcare environment. And so it says Candida auris is a, an emerging fungal pathogen that can cause large outbreaks in healthcare facilities. Understanding how Candida auris spreads in healthcare facilities is essential for infection control. Because Candida auris can be present on the skin without causing symptoms, right? we talked about the colonization, it has been hypothesized that the spread of Candida auris occurs as patients naturally shed their skin cells. This process could lead to substantial contamination of the surrounding environment and therefore increased chances of transmitting Candida auris. So to test this hypothesis, researchers developed methods to count candida auris in samples collected from patients' skin and their rooms. We found that patients have, can have a very high concentration of candida auris on their skin 
and higher levels of candida auris on their skin were correlated with higher levels of the yeast on the patient's bed. And according to Joe Sexton uh, with the My Mycotic Diseases Branch at the CDC, who uh, designed and led the study, quote, this finding supported our hypothesis that patients are actively shedding candida auris cells into the environment. Uh, the researchers were able to culture live candida auris from the beds of all patients who tested positive and even beds that were previously but no longer occupied by patients with candida auris. And Dr. Sexton closes with, with this. These results should be considered in developing more effective strategies for infection control efforts during a candida auris outbreak. So yeah, really important thing that's going on in the infectious disease, disease world, infection prevention, and um, a very serious pathogen, candida auris. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this uh, program, and I would appreciate it if you liked it. Uh, uh, subscribe to the show, share it with your friends, and uh, go ahead and comment below if you've got anything to say. And I appreciate it, and I'll see you next time. And don't forget to check us out at the website, OutbreakNewsToday.com, the podcast, Outbreak News Interviews, which can be found on the website, on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and Spotify, and the Outbreak News This Week radio show, which is aired Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time in the Tampa Bay area, on AM 1380 The Biz or online streaming at 1380thebiz.com. And check out our social media presence, Facebook at Infectious Disease News and Twitter at BackDman63. Outbreak News TV is a production of The Global Dispatch. Copyright The Global Dispatch Incorporated 2019.